What's up soldiers? Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Just putting the finishing touches on a curry goat, Caribbean style, and this XL pressure cooker here. You know, one of those uh, electric ones, man. You're going to love this. You know, the company sent this to me, wow, maybe about three years ago, and I've never really put it to use with all the, the hype around it and requests for recipes. I thought I'd share a classic Caribbean curry goat with you. So here we go, man. Stay tuned. The first thing we've got to do in making this um this curry goat in that power pressure cooker, well XL, is to season it. And I'm gonna go in with salt. And all the ingredients will be listed down in the description down below. The recipe itself will be posted on CaribbeanPod.com um, pretty soon. Black pepper. Now you guys may have heard me said in the past I am not a huge fan of using pressure cookers because I find it doesn't allow for those complex flavors to really develop today you know a lot of requests so I thought I'd you know oblige I'm gonna go in with a tiny bit of curry powder in here as well um, <clears throat> we've got some fresh parsley some scallion some cherry tomato, don't fret, please save the hate comments on the tomato. That tomato serves a purpose in this, in any curry as a matter of fact. Just switch what them fellas and them doing out there in Asia, in Southeast Asia out there, in South Asia. Yeah, tomatoes is a, a key ingredient in curry, trust me. We've got some fresh thyme, so I'm going to break off the leaves, but I also want the stems in there as well. I've got here half of a scotch bonnet pepper. And again, as I have may have mentioned in the past, if you're not a, accustomed to using scotch bonnet peppers, one, it can be very spicy. Two, wash your hands with soap and water after that curry is going to stay in my finger. But um, also, wear gloves. I didn't use, if you notice, we didn't use any of the seeds or the white membrane there. That's where that real heat is going to be. If you like your curry goat, and I mean, say, I like it very spicy. Um, you can't put the entire pepper in there, but for today, we're going to hold off on that. I'm just going to go ahead and give that a good mix and let that marinate while we sort of bring everything together. Now, since we're using a pressure cooker, I really don't see the need to marinate this overnight and stuff like that. If you wanted to, if you had the time, remember the whole pressure cooker thing is about convenience and doing it fast, right? But if you had the time, after you mix it up, Cover it in the fridge a couple hours or overnight. I'm just going to go and I'm going to go ahead and press. We've got chicken meat, but I want it to go all the way to one minute. And the reason why I'm one hour, the reason why I'm doing it is, and your pressure cooker may have, that just means it's coming up to temperature there. Your one may have a brown setting. This one, I don't see a brown setting on there. But I'm going to use the first 15 minutes to sort of sear the meat and to really cook out the rawness of the curry powder, thus using one hour. Technically, I want to cook it for about 45 minutes to about 50 minutes or so. So as it starts to warm up there, I'm going to go in with about a tablespoon and a half of vegetable oil. And we want that to come up to a high heat. And this is where we're going to sort of sear and um, develop those wicked flavors that I mentioned earlier. Sometimes you just don't get that in a pressure cooker, but we're going to try, you know. I'm going to go in with a diced onion. And that's a small onion. And I've got four cloves of garlic that I just smashed with the back of my knife there. Let's give that a quick little mixy mixy. I really don't want the garlic to burn, so at this point here is where we're going to go in with that curry powder. And we want to really toast this to develop those flavors and to bring out all the wickedness of the spices which makes up a good curry powder. And if you're wondering, that is my own blend that I make there. Use your favorite curry powder. We just want to give that about a minute, uh, 30 seconds to about a minute or so. Here's where I'm going to add in the seasoned curry goat in there now. I'm not going to put the lid on this yet to start pressure cooking. I want that high heat to sort of sear the outside. In the same bowl that I marinated the 
the goat in. Did I say beef? I can't remember. <laughs> it's goat, trust me, it is goat. Just want to give that a good mix and just sort of sear it a little bit. If you wanted to do it like maybe three, four pieces at a time, you can certainly do that. But I'm going to put about one cup of water in this bowl, swish it around to pick up any of the left back marinade that's in there. It's been going now for about 10 minutes. Um, what we're going to do now, <clears throat> we're going to go in with that water. If you wanted to use some sort of stock in there, you can certainly do that. I find that it changes the, the flavor and uniqueness of the goat if you go in with any sort of stock. That's just my personal preference, using water. I've got three more flavor ingredients to go in there and I've got a couple slices of ginger, some bam bam, a bay leaf, and we've got here uh, about six small pimento berries or pimento seeds as my Jamaican brethren and them would say. Just gonna tuck that in there. On goes the lid. We're gonna go in, it's in the lock position. And we've got 50 minutes to bring that up to a nice curry goat. One of the things I forgot to mention, I'm just gonna bring the camera. I'm, ha I'm holding it in my hand now, so if it's shaky, I do apologize. You want to make sure the setting, the arrow is lined up for the pressure cooker setting and not the sort of venting setting, the sort of geyser that you see in there. You really want that to be lined up there, you know? Ooh, my hand's shaking, boy. Got three more minutes to go. The countdown is on. Then we're going to allow it to breathe or get all that venting done. And then we're going to thicken up the gravy, taste it for salt. All kind of goodness we're going to be doing still. The time's up now, so I'm just going to vent it. And I ain't playing around with this. Oh, yeah, yeah. You see how scared I was there? Just gonna line it up to the vent setting. Allow it to fully vent. <laughs> Yo, that thing scared me, man. I'm just gonna <laughs> allow that to fully vent, and then we'll open it up. Fully vented now. So we're just gonna crack the seal, open it up, and we've got all that niceness happening in there. Now you will notice it is a bit runny, too runny for my liking. See all that gravy, but word, man. Yo. Falling off the bones. Ay 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 man. Oh man. I'm very impressed I'm gonna taste it for salt at this point here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a spoon I don't know if you guys can see it. Hold on. Let me take the camera down But if you notice On the surface So we can get a close-up of it On the surface there. There's a lot of fat from the um, a lot of oil from the goat itself I'm gonna skim off that and then I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna put it well I'm gonna put it back on high because I want it to sort of thicken up for about five ten minutes or something like that taste it for salt and then let's get cracking and as you can see I don't know if you guys can see that that is all oil and that's the stuff that kills us right we really don't want that you know some people will argue well Chris that's all the flavor yeah that's the reason why you end up in a hospital as well you don't want to pour that down your sink because this will congeal It'll block your sinks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dab it with a paper towel after and put it in the garbage. But I want you guys to take a peep at this. Look at all the fat. You really don't want that going into your system. And this is where you can take off, take out the um, the bay leaf and the slices of ginger. It's okay if those pimento berries come in the mix here as well. I got too much gravy. I'm trying to waste my gravy either. But I'm just gonna continue doing this. Look at that. Yo, that's ridiculous, man. What I didn't notice after I removed most of that fat from there, um, the gravy is not as liquid as it would originally seem. The other thing I know is this will thicken up quite a bit as it cools down. So the last thing I'm gonna do here is to go in with some finely chopped cilantro if you're from Trinbago and you want to rock the um the shadow benny by all means chris and hating i don't have access to that right now chris here caribbeanpod.com always a pleasure to have you guys here in the kitchen with me pressure 
Power Pressure Cooker XL Curry Goat One Hour. Yo, you can't go wrong, man. Nice and tender, falling off the bone, all kind of thing. Remember to join me on Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube for Recipe Chit Chat, where we will take this recipe apart, answer questions, all them things like that. So leave your questions down below. Make it an iry day, man. My little baby is here. We've got cookbooks, guys. WestIndianFoodCompany.com. Get your copy today.